You know what time it is. Time to hang out hey, with Mr. Cool. We're Mr. Cooper. We're Mr. Cooper. We're Mr. Cooper. Get the latest cool. From Mr. Cooper. From Mr. Cooper. From Mr. Cooper. Hey, we're Mr. Cooper. We're Mr. Cooper. We're Mr. Cooper. We're Mr. Cooper. Get the latest cool. From Mr. Cooper. From Mr. Cooper. Welcome to the Big Scoop with Coop. I'm your host, Coop. Big shout outs to everyone that's listening on Apple Podcasts, Pandora, Our Heart Radio, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, wherever you're listening to. Big shout outs to you. If you want to catch the video version of this show, make sure you go to my website to catch full episodes at thebigscoopwithcoop.com. Also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash the Big Scoop with Coop. You can also catch a 15-minute preview of this episode right here on Instagram at Big Scoop with Coop. All right, people, enough about me. Today's guest, he is an actor. He is a producer. He is doing so many great things in this television and movie industry. Um, you've seen him in Tyler Perry, the Diary of a Mad Black Woman. You have seen him in Tyler Perry's The Have and Have Nots. You have seen him in The House of Pain. He's also a producer and an actor on the film For the Love of Money. And his newest project that's out right now is called The Cool and the Strong. That will be coming on PBS. Make sure on Sunday at 6 p.m. Make sure you check this out. This is a game changer for PBS. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Cedric Pendleton. Cedric has been doing big things in this industry, not just in the television movie industry, also in the comedy era, in the comedy realm. He's a host for comedians. He's actually done a little stand-up comedy himself and transitioned over to the television movie industry or the entertainment industry. We will talk to Cedric. We will find out how he started his career. We will talk about his latest project, project The Cool and the Strong. We will talk a little Tyler Perry also. So sit back, relax, and enjoy so let's go on and get up with Cedric and let's go on and kick it with him. All right, let's do it. Mr. Cedric Pendleton, welcome to the show. Hey, welcome. Hey, no, thank you, brother. I mean, I sat back and looked at some of the other interviews and I was like, I'm I'm happy to be in the company of the people that you're interviewing. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. So yes, I, sir. Pre I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Oh, of course. Anytime, anytime. How's your day going yeah. so far? Man, my day is kind of interesting. I just to share with you, I'm uh, in Alabama with my family, and I got up this morning and um, I grow I grow food, right? So mm -hmm. I have a garden. So I grew these huge cabbages, and I brought them from uh, Georgia to Alabama, and I spent the morning making slaw with my mama in her kitchen. Is this pool hall slaw that you make in North Alabama? But I got my mama's recipe, so to spend the morning with my mama making slaw, brother, I'm good. Ooh, ooh. Hey, <laughs> I, I'm I mean? in North, I'm in North Carolina, so trust me, I know about that food. Oh, uh, uh, you know about that slaw, huh? I know about it. Oh, I definitely see, know about it. Well, I, but if you're not using French mustard, you don't know about the slaw, bro. <laughs> you, you better <laughs> preach, Cedric. You better preach. You don't know <laughs> about this law. Word up, word up. Now, Cedric, man, like I said before, you have done so much in your career. Your career is nowhere close to being over. But for the people that's getting introduced to you for the first time, when did you first realize that you wanted to get into the television and movie industry? Um, the film and TV industry came after 15 years of being on stage from Atlanta to New York. I did a show with uh, the late Ruby D who was married to Ozzie Davis. Um, Ruby D had a conversation with me concerning how much celluloid I had. And I was like, baby, I don't have any cellulite. I work out. She was like, she was like, no, Cedric, uh, how much film and television do you have? And when I told her I didn't have any, she told me to stop doing stage at the time and to concentrate on film and television. And it started from there. And so I really am thankful that I had that tutelage coming from her because it's helped my career tremendously. That's what I'm talking about. Now, mm -hmm. um, now doing that, you know, you had that help right there to actually put a bug in your ear, you know, to go on and step up and, you know, do your thing for television, do your thing for movies, you know, and it's worked out for you a lot. Now, um, what type of hurdles did you go through when you first, you know, started, when you took that path? 
Uh, well, like any other hurdle. I mean, like any other thing that you say that you want to do that you've never done before, there's a learning curve. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that is of the most important for me is where do you train? So as long as you are training and you're training every day and you're trying to do something to get better at your craft, eventually you will turn around and look back and you will be better at your craft and people will be giving you accolades. And so, I mean, that's, that's the thing about me and my career is that I have constantly trained in all aspects of entertainment. Matter of fact, uh, a producer buddy of me called me to the carpet and, and when he called me to the carpet two days ago, I told him to check back with me in a month and see if I haven't picked up speed and done that thing that he says that I'm, uh, um, I'm, you know, that I'm lacking in. So the thing that I'm su suggesting to you is no matter what it is, when you first start out, you're not as good as you're going to be, but like every other major athlete in the game, you keep getting coached and trained and learning something that you did not know. And hopefully you come out to be what you want to be, which for me, I want to be great at what I do. And yeah. so Hum humbly, a uh, humble is that a word? Humbly, <laughs> humbly. Yeah, if it's not, we go write in the dictionary today. Right, right, right. Humbly <laughs> enough, <laughs> um, God has blessed me to to work with some talented people, and hopefully, my skills continue to shine through. So we'll that, see. That's what I'm talking about. But you know what? I want to say this real quick, ladies and gentlemen, is watching worldwide. What Cedric just said does not just pertain to the entertainment industry. I don't care if you're a plumber. I don't care if you're a warehouse worker. It don't matter. If you be That's the right. best at what you can do, I'm telling you, you'll get elevated up to that next level. You just got to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And trust me, it's going to shoot up. It's definitely going to shoot up. Look, man, what God what God has for you, can't nobody else, like, stop that. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm a true believer in, you know, God has directed my path and yeah. what steps I should take and what projects I should get in and what opportunities are presented to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yo, that's what got me to where I am. I'm going to keep rocking with it. You know what I mean? And please don't stop because your work has shown worldwide. Oh, bro. It, it has. Thanks, bro. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no thanks. Doubt. I, 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 really, I really appreciate that. I do. I mean, coming from you, I, 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 I really appreciate that. I hey, do. It's the truth. Speaking nothing but the truth. Now, you did talk about, you know, when you first started, but did you have any more mentors that help you out on this road to where you're at right now in the career? Do get I? I mean, if you don't have a mentor to get where you're going, you don't know what you're doing. Um, every industry that I've ever tackled, everything that I've tried to get involved in, I've always had someone around me that knew more than me mm -hmm. that I could humbly pick up the phone and call and hopefully serve in some capacity and learn as I serve. Uh, so, yeah, mentors around. Are you kidding? Yes, man. Are you kidding? Yes. <laughs> Brother, have a, I mean, you know, there are certain men that I, men and women, mm -hmm. to be very frank, that I pick up the phone and I make phone calls too. And like when I'm stuck or I can't figure something out, I, yeah, there are people that I definitely do that to presently every day. Wow. Wow. Every day. And you know, Cedric, there's a saying that's out there that says, if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to get out of the room and find some more company. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's always good to have a mentor. Yeah, yeah, man. You, if you if you the smartest person in the room, you in a small room. You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> That's so true. You are in a small room, so mm -hmm. no, man. I'm I'm uh, I'm constantly looking for that next person that I can glean from, or that person that I can sit at their feet and be educated. But yeah, man. From from an acting as well as producing mm -hmm. and writing perspective, yeah, I've had those individuals in my life. Yeah, can sure. you name can you name a few of them? Not all of them, but two or three of them. Um, I mean, you know, whether you know them or not, they right. are. Let's they give mean them props. Something to me. I mean, yeah. you know, Elizabeth and Ofemo Amalami, who do the feeding the hungry in Atlanta. They were some of the people that I set up under. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, it, uh, believe it or not. You know, I consider my manager to actually be one of the best in the game. So mm -hmm. her, Ross Stevens, artist and entertainment. I mean, it just, um, I I have had, even Tyler, Tyler Perry. I mean, I have sat with Tyler and had conversations concerning certain things. And 
and have watched him develop over the course of the years and have learned from Tyler. Uh, Tyler's right. business partner, who I will not call his name, right? but I have spent time and stood on the corner of a peach tree street and had a conversation <laughs> with him and he poured into me. Um, nice. There are several... Yeah. several people that I could continue to go on, but I'm going to stop there because I don't want to leave anybody out. It'd be like church. You didn't say my name. <laughs> so, so, no, Man, no. big shots to everybody you just named because it, it don't have to be a well-known person that can mentor you in your own game because you have to realize when people have outside eyes that seeing what you're doing, they can say, hey, tweet this or do that, you know, or mm continue going what you're doing right now so mm. yeah i mean i even have family members that people don't even know that that's my mentor you know what i'm saying so it, it's out there it's definitely out there now speaking of that though you done more than just acting you done stand-up comedy you're a comedian at the same time now is it hard to switch hats even though i know they can shake hands with each other from the comedy realm to the acting realm but going from stand-up to live television, those are two different monsters. Is it hard to switch well, those hats? Well, let, let, let me be truthful. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I've done stand up. Yeah. And, and I've done stand up and been successful and done stand up and bombed, like every stand up com uh, comedian knows that that time comes. But I found that my niche in the comedy world is more from a hosting perspective than anything else. I mean, I enjoy it. Some comics don't enjoy hosting i enjoy hosting um uh, it's the thing that uh, actually excites me because i get to interact with the, with the crowd and tell stories in a manner that uh, kind of makes them kind of look at themselves so from the comedy perspective yeah man i'm and it, it, it's funny that you asked that question because i'm constantly trying to get better at that every time i have the opportunity including going to class spending time with other comics I mean, just doing doing the things that are necessary to 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 make it better. But believe it or not, the comedy it it makes my acting that much better because you find yourself improving and making people laugh on set and finding out that you're using that within your own acting kind of arsenal. And so, yeah, man, it, no, it, it it's not a big it's not a big switch. It's just a, it's another facet of your personality. And and believe me, dude, I will work at something until I get better at it. So I tell people all the time, the first time that I ever played baseball, I went an entire year and never hit the ball. And then the next year I came up to bat and hit the ball and stood there and just watched everybody because I didn't know what to do after you hit the ball. So my point is, during the course of that year, I became an all-star. My point is, is in the beginning, like anything else in your life, like you may start out one thing, but that's not where you end up. And so hopefully, as as my my daughter says, my comedy gets better every time I do it. So like, mm -hmm. that's the whole thing. As Rodney Perry says, it's a muscle. You got to work it, baby. You got to work it. So that's I it. it. I love it. I love it. Now, Serge, I want to talk about this real quick. Um, Like I said, you have been very noticeable um, in a lot of the Tyler Perry joints for House of Pain, the Have and Have and Nots, mm -hmm. Diary of the Black. Mm -hmm. My mad black woman and much more you have done. How excited were you when you first started working with Tyler Perry and actually got presented as a role on these shows? How excited were you? Um, what most people don't know is I spent a year and a half on the road with Tyler behind the scenes working in management um, with Tyler and touring him around the country before anybody knew who he was. So um, I left the tour specifically because uh, I got in a limo and the limo driver prophesied to me and told me that he saw me doing other things. And so I walked into, matter of fact, I walked into the production office and had a conversation with the guy that was over the tour and told him I was leaving. And he looked at me like I was strange, like, are you sure? And all I could say, simply say is I heard God and that was it. And so Six months later, uh, I get a phone call from an agent that says, you know, Tyler's about to go into film. And I walk into the audition and there's Tyler. And he's like, what you want? And I was like, I come to audition. And he started laughing. And so the rest is history, man. And so th that's how my 
relationship has been in that camp for some time. I've been blessed and fortunate enough that when they see the right opportunity for the brand that I built and what I bring to a particular cast, they give me a shot on an opportunity. So I look again, that's a God thing, dog. That ain't got not, nothing to do with, it's got everything to do with the skill and the preparation to get there. But at the end of the day, that's a God thing. God opens that door. I walk through. That's it. Hey, you know what, Cedric? I tell people all the time, you never know when your season is going to come. Mm. And, and you know, when that season comes and that door open, you even had Tyler asking, hey, dog, what you doing here? And look at you. And, and you know what? God answered that question for Tyler. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. You don't know when it's going to hit you. And I can actually talk about that for 25,000 years. You never know when it's going to hit you. And the thing is, when the favor is on you and when the right season come in the right time, door is going to open like never before. And, you know, you received that prophecy. It happened. And look at you now, man. I can't, I can't stop saying it. Look at you now. And the thing is, you know, we're close to the end of your career. You don't even know what's about to come next for you in your next season, Cedric. Trust me. Well, this ain't I mean, the end. I, bro, I, 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 from your, from your lips to God, is. I mean, you know, on the real, but I'm going to tell you like this. I'm an old Alabama farmer. I mm -hmm. mean, I don't, I don't know how else to say it. I plant seeds into the ground every Be day. So. And so it's God's responsibility to make it grow. It's my responsibility to put the fertilizer in the ground, to do the things that are necessary, to pull the weeds, to make sure water. But the rest of it, to give the increase, that's God. That's God's work, man. That ain't my work. I don't worry about that. I just continue to work make the skills sharp and the opportunities present themselves. And that, that's where I am. That's how I am. Man, Cedric, if you keep that mindset, I'm telling you, there's another level. Oh, sorry. Let me take that back. I apologize. There are more levels that are coming right. your way. I don't want to make that singular. I got to make that plural. You know what I'm saying? I'll take so, that. Yeah, it's definitely coming. I, now I, I'll take that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, also, not just acting, you know, you're also an executive producer. You actually um, produced a film for the love of money. Now, how did that present to you? And what was your experience as with the producer head on? Same situation. Uh, corona happened. Everybody shut down. I caught Corona uh, twice at that particular point. Uh, I didn't tell anybody that I had gone through Corona for a second time. I get a phone call that says, what you doing? And I'm going, laying in the bed. That's all I said. And it was like, uh, you want to come, come star in this film? And I'm like, uh, yeah. What about Corona? They were like, we have been taking safety precautions, so forth and so on. So the next thing I know, I was on a flight um, and I'm standing in front of a camera. And so as I started uh, going through the process and seeing who else was involved in the film, watching the film, I pulled the executive producer to the side and said, you know what, I may be able to help with distribution of this film. And he's like, what? So then we negotiated and I ended up being an EP. So the, the whole point is, you start out doing one thing, get good at that one particular thing. And then God continues to open up the doors in the same manner. So that that's kind of how that situation happened. I, I ended up in a situation where God continued to open the doors and I continued to do situations where God continues to open the doors. I just stay humble, dog, do my work, pray, do my prayer, stay prayed yeah. up, do what yes. I do. I ain't perfect. Nobody you is. Heard? Nobody is. I am not perfect. Nobody. But in that same instance, I'm on my knees in the morning, man, every morning, making sure that uh that uh I hear and do the things that I'm called to do. That's I it. love it. I love it. Now tell everybody about this movie though, um, Cedric, for the love of money. What what is the movie about and how can people see it? Well, you know, for the love of money came out in theaters originally, and then and it was number one on stars for an entire year. And now it seems like uh, it's gone to Tubi. And so you can see it on Tubi right now. Uh, it stars Carrie Hilson, DC Young Fly, Rotimi, myself. Uh, it has uh, Jason Mitchell in it. I mean, the movie is dope. 
it just really is. It's the story of a young lady and the things, and it's got Cat Williams in it yep. in a manner that uh, you've never seen Cat Williams before. But um, it's the story of a young lady having to jump through hoops in order to take care of her responsibility and child. I call it a, a modern day urban Wonder Woman legend is what it is. And so, yeah, that show is is, pre is presently on Tubi. I'm thankful to be a part of that cast. I'm thankful to be involved in that particular story. And so that's what it is. It is what it is. I like it. Ladies and gentlemen, watch Worldwide. Make sure you go watch the movie for the love of money. Go to Tubi and watch it. Not right now, because you're watching this interview. Uh, After this interview, go uh, peep it out. Make sure you go to Tubi. Find this movie. This is a movie you want to see. Then you're going to see a star lineup, like he just said, like never before. Make sure you check it out. Now, also, I will commend you on something else, man. You've been working with the youth, man. You've I been have, doing man. things and, with the kids. And I just got released like at three o'clock today to be able to talk about this particular project that I'm working on uh, because, you know, actors are on strike and I was honoring the strike and I had to go through the hoops and jump through the hoops that were necessary in order to be able to talk about this because we're not supposed to do interviews or anything right. of that nature. But I've been I've been uh, released to be able to talk about it. Um, I'm doing this show called The Cool and the Strong, yes. and The Cool and the Strong is uh, about a group of kids that are having a problem following their dreams and learning. For those of you that don't know, um, South Carolina is probably uh, 48th in education. Yes. Alabama's probably 49th in education. Uh, Georgia just moved up to like number 32 in education. So essentially what I'm suggesting to you is black and brown kids in themselves were already struggling. But when Corona happened, now they're reading two grades less than what they were reading before. So which from that particular perspective, they're struggling. There's not any educational material or material that kids watch that tell them that they're capable of doing things that are far-fetched, doing things that are dream, or dreams or things of that magnitude. And so what I'm saying to you is the cool and the strong gives them that opportunity to do it. Basically, it's uh, PBS, mm -hmm. and it airs this Sunday for the first episode. And so it is what it is. I, I, I keep saying the same thing. They're kind of making me the the Mr. Rogers of the of, <laughs> of PBS in a sense of being Mr. Rogers with some swag and some hair. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, so, right. and the funny thing is, is they allowed me to wear, you know, the costuming in itself. I got Dinka symbols on my bracelets. I mean, it's, it's, it's us in the, in the greatest form. But the whole reason I got into entertainment in the first place was because I was dealing with some knucklehead kids in the inner city and I was trying to teach them acting and I didn't know anything about it. And so for it to come full circle, yep. where well, now I'm dealing with kids in this manner, and uh, you know, this little girl called me, Mr. my character's name is Mr. Gray, and so I saw this little girl after the shoot, she was like, bye, Mr. Gray. I was like, oh, geez, <laughs> I'm gonna be known as Mr. Gray with the kids, cause say it loves yep. the kids. <laughs> there, there you go, there you, you know go, I mean? not only trick, say it loves the kids. <laughs> say it loves the kids, man. <laughs> That's what the kids. And also, ladies and gentlemen, watching right now, um, I know he said, "What? tell him again what day is coming out. Uh, it drops August the 6th on PBS. Uh, the deal is is we're, we're airing the pilot. Uh, I will share this with you. The pilot got a number uh, 91 in a closed audience kind of polling kind of deal. And, um, you know, we shot the pilot as a proof of concept. Mm -hmm. uh, to see if PBS would pick it up. And so it's airing in South Carolina and on PBS in South Carolina. But I just got notification today that it's been pushed to the national. So fingers crossed. That's all I'm going to say about that. Ooh, fingers crossed. But I found myself as, again, as an actor and ended up as co-executive producer on the, on the project in itself. And hopefully, uh, we're gonna take this project all the way in. Oh, it's you going. You can believe that. Yeah, oh, it's oh, going. You can believe. Oh, but look, when you see it, 
it looked like a Disney project. It I'm does. Front all brother. This project is matter of fact, I'm gonna send you a link to the trailer so that you can have a link to the trailer in itself. But brother, when I tell you that this thing is banging, oh. I, I'm not I'm not kidding. Cedric, I already peeped the trailer out. And ladies what? and gentlemen, if you want to see this trailer, go to YouTube. It's on YouTube right now. I Cedra even looking like, how in the heck can I see this? You go to YouTube and you type in the cool and the strong, you're going to see him. You will see him doing his little magic with his hands. You will see the books. You will see the kids on the desk dancing around. You will see all of that. Yeah, that's right, Cedra. I caught you off guard. Uh, you caught me I caught you off guard on that with that one. one. Yeah, that's right. You, did. you, did. So, you caught me off guard on that one, dog. Ladies and gentlemen, if you, if you think he's lying and he's not, this looks like Disney 101 right here. Yeah, man. Check out the yeah, trailer. Man. Go to YouTube. Type in The Cool and the Strong. You're going to see the trailer for the first episode right there. And there's let, a nice lineup in that also. But let me share Let me share a couple of things, uh, just a couple of things. A, yeah. this, this, this whole concept was put together by Stephanie Perry Moore and, and Perry Moore Entertainment. Uh, a black woman, she's a showrunner. And then in that same instance, you've got an executive, Dr. Bowman over at PBS, uh, a black woman. And then you've got uh, Sam or uh, who, Sam Moore, who is a first time director in this capacity. Um, she is, the, she's the next female that's gonna bang in a director's perspective in a sense of coming out with projects that are cutting edge. But Sam did a wonderful job. So again, another black woman. Yes. So my whole point to you is black girl magic is all the way through this. And so it made me proud to be a part of this and to bring what I could bring to the table and yet and still be surrounded with the kind of sisters that you know are trying to push education forward and to educate our kids and to build the nation and do the things that are necessary. I'm just, I'm so incredibly thankful and just, one more. Yeah. The head football coach for the University of South Carolina is making a starring appearance in it. Then you've got the governor's daughter of South Carolina is in it. And then the governor has, I, I can't tell you what he's committed <laughs> to, but uh, but the point is this thing has all of the elements in it that are necessary in order to propel people towards education and give teachers the things that they need in order to make their kids excited and pour into them. That's all I'm trying to do is continue to give teachers the tools that are necessary because both my parents are educated. Mm -hmm. 38 years, uh, 32 years chemistry biology teacher. My dad, my mom was 43 years in the classroom as a first Ooh. grade teacher. Yeah, bro. Education. Boom. Said love the kids. Ooh. I love Woo! It's in his DNA, people. It's in well, his DNA. <laughs> he has no choice. Man, I'm telling you, I know I said it on For the Love of Money, but this one, you definitely have to go check. The Cool and the Strong, like I said, make sure you catch episode one when it drops. Make sure you check the trailer out after this show also. You don't want to miss this. I'm telling you, this will take PBS to that next level. This is next level show, what I'm trying to tell you guys. Don't believe me. You don't even got to believe Cedric. Watch it ah. yourself and watch what happens. Ah. Now, now, Cedric, I know you're very limited on what you can say on this next question. So I'm going to still ask, are there any other projects that you're working on that you would like the world to know about right now? Yeah, I, I, I can't really open my mouth. It's funny that you right. asked that question because... Uh, yeah, there's something I'm working on that I, I, you know, I met with investors on yesterday and okay. I'm going to push it into the, into the next, into the next thing. I, I keep saying the same thing. I'm doing what I'm called to do and that's all I'm going to do. Okay. And so, but yeah, yeah, man, that, there's something I'd say probably in the next 10 weeks at the most, 10 weeks. Yeah. Maybe even shorter, the shorter, shorter period of time than that. You're going to see. All of a sudden, something else pops up that I'm working on. Just FYI to you, um, I got some music that dropped on Friday what? <laughs> as well. Yeah, man. Uh, this brother came out with an album. I'll, I'll send you a link okay. to the album as well. But he came out with an album. I'm on six of the songs. Um, I, you know, dude, I just I do what I'm called to do. So I got some music that dropped just in the marketplace just recently. 
And so I don't know where any of this stuff is going. I just know when I and look, when I transition and I go go to meet my maker, I'm going to be like, yo, I took all of my gifts and I and I rolled them like four flat tires on the Impala. That's all I want to do, bro. I just want to wear these gifts out. That's it. And you know what? And when you do that, I'm going to let you know what God's going to say. He will say, you know what? I saw it on stream and I saw it on cable also. Like everybody <laughs> else in the world saw it. You ain't telling me nothing new. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going to say. And he's going to say, come on in, man. Come on in. That's exactly <laughs> what he's going to say. That's, that's what I'm telling you. Now, Sandra, how can everybody follow you on social media, man, to keep up with everything? Social, that- social media is Cedric Pendleton on all platforms. C-E-D-R-I-C-P-E-N-D-L-E-T-O-N. Cedric Pendleton on all platforms, Facebook and, you know, all of them, all of them. It's the same, it's the same thing. And so if anybody, uh, <laughs> follow me, man, follow me, follow me. Like, like everybody say, follow me, <laughs> find me. Yeah. If you, if you want to keep up with what Cedric's doing next, when the strike is over, I got a feeling he's going to be posting stuff left and right on his Yo. social media for his projects. Make sure you follow him, keep up with him. The latest and the greatest coming out. Now, um, Cedric, what advice would you give any male or female that wants to take this executive producer role or wants to become an actor or actress in this um, industry, especially when the strike is over? You know, at at one particular time in my life, I used to say grind, but that ain't the truth. The truth is work every day at what it is that you want to become. And eventually you'll look back and you'll be there. So my advice to someone is, is what we talked about earlier about finding a mentor or somebody that knows more than you that can deposit into you. Um, for me, you know, it's the simplest of things um, that seem to be depositing into me. I, I'll share this with you, man. I did something real stupid recently, right? I live in Atlanta presently, one of the places I live. Let me say it to you like that. And so I drove from Atlanta to Aspen, Colorado to go pick up a moped. I bought a moped in Aspen, Colorado. And I drove 23 hours, though, to go pick up a moped. And when I got to the halfway point, which was Oklahoma City, I stayed with my homeboy, and he dogged the heck out of me. About what? They don't sell mopeds? They don't don't sell mopeds in Atlanta? (laughs) I was like, I couldn't explain it. And all I can say to you is I kept feeling in my spirit that I needed to go to Aspen. I couldn't explain it. But when I stood on top of the tallest mountain in Aspen and went from 90 degree weather at the base to 20 degree weather at the top of the mountain in Aspen, and when there was snow at my feet and I've got on a coat and there's water coming out of the mountain, and I look over the mountain, God reminded me that my vision was too small. That you have to dream bigger and ridiculous. That you have to do something that is out of the ordinary. The mountain was good for Jesus. It prepared him to go to the cross. The mountain was good for Moses, except he didn't get into the promised land. But the mountain for me opened up my mind and my third eye so that I could see what the future really is. And so what I suggest to anybody listening under the sound of my voice, whatever it is that you dream that you want to do, you dream in too small. Dream mm. bigger. Mm. Mm. Dream bigger. Ooh. And then run after it like you lost your mind. God, so you know That's- what? It, I, I, I don't even know why we're doing the last segment of the show next because I got a feeling you, you're going to repeat yourself Cause that was deep right there. That was, but we still going to do it. That, ladies and gentlemen, it's watching worldwide. I hope you taking every nugget that Cedric is saying, every diamond he's thrown at you through this interview, because he's telling you guys, not even in code, he's telling you straight up, whatever you doing, you can do more and do bigger. You definitely can. Now, Cedric, this is the last um, segment of the show. It's called Take the Floor. You will have up to two minutes to say whatever you want. No questions asked. Cedric Pendleton, take the floor. You know, oof. I have been living my life by hiding under a bushel for a long period of time, right? Like I went through some things where, you know, people passed in my life. I went through depression. I went 
through grief. I went through, and, and you have a tendency to hide when you do those things. You hide who you are. You hide your failures. You hide your idiosyncrasies. You hide from that. But then that doesn't serve God. And for me, I would prefer for you to see my flaws. Forget that. I'll tell you what my flaws are. Make you laugh in the process because everybody can relate to a flaw that they have in their own life. But here's the key. You can't stay there. Because once you lift the bushel that, the, that you're hiding your light up under and you see that you're being you, God will give you more than what you ever imagined. And so what I'm saying to you is ask God to expand your territory, but know that territory expansion comes with responsibility. And for me, my responsibility is, God, let me do the things that you placed in my soul so that my family can eat and my family's family can eat and those people that are around me can eat because God gives the increase. But at the beginning, if you're under a bushel, if you're hiding under a bushel, meaning hiding your gifts, if you're keeping them at bay, if you're not singing and you know that you're a singer, if you're not writing and you know that you're a writer, then you ain't serving anybody. Lift the bushel and let your light shine. Let God do the rest and he'll bring every opportunity to you. That's the two minutes on the floor for me. Cedric, I... You, you said it all. You said it all. Cedric, thank you very much for coming on the show. Bro, uh, I would love to have you back on in the future. Man, I would love to do it. I mean, at any 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 given time, reach out to my people, man. I, I'd love to hang out with you, dog. I, I really enjoy the content that you're putting out in the world. It's a blessing. It's a blessing upon blessing. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Thank you. All right, people, next episode on the Bit Scoop with Coop. My next guest is, you know I don't never announce my next guest. You better keep up with me on social media <laughs> at the Bit Scoop with Coop. Make sure you catch up on everything that Cedric is doing. Make sure, Once again, people, PBS, catch the show. You don't want to miss it. The cool and the Sunday. strong. Make Sunday, sure you six, keep. Six, six o'clock on Sunday. You heard it, six o'clock on Sunday. All right, people, until the next time on the Bit Scoop with Coop. Peace.